It's good to be there. Where where are the people? I don't see any people. I don't even hear people. Show them! If, if you, uh, just to sort of get things started, um, how did you you guys get in, involved in, in this in the making of this doc? Of course, Judd, you were uh, involved with uh, the film that she was in, Forty Year Old Virgin. Can you talk a little bit about that? And also, um, Sarah Chiman as well. How you got involved in this project? Judd, you go. Well, I met Stormy. She did the Forty Year Old Virgin, right. and then she was in Knocked Up. And she was uh, always hilarious and really fun to deal with. And so when all of this came out in the press, we laughed because she told us that she slept with Trump on set at Video Village in 2006. <laughs> I think it was literally just a few days later. And none of us thought it was that exciting a story. We were like, yeah, the apprentice guy. We didn't care. And uh, so when it came out, we were like, oh, it's true. She told us so long ago about this story and you know we kept in touch uh, a little bit and when uh, sarah started working on this with uh, aaron lee carr who i've known for a long time the the producer they said do you want to be a part of it and i said of course thank so, you and sarah how did how did you get uh get wrangled into this really i mean dense very compelling documentary oh thank you so um, I met Stormy in 2019 on a comedy project in Los Angeles, and she left our set and went up to Calgary to cross the border to go and do some comedy shows up there. And she was stopped at the border with the 17 false charges on her FBI record. And that was um, the scene in the film that you saw. And so she was calling me from the airport telling me what had happened, and it sounded like unfathomable. It sounded like a, it sounded like the born identity or something. Like it just didn't seem real. And um, finding out later that it was, uh, that was very frightening. And um, it wasn't that we kept in touch after that, having, you know, gone through this, this traumatic experience with her on the phone at the border. And then um, in the aftermath of that, when she was on the stand against Michael Avenatti, you know, and I had followed the Stormy Daniel story quite closely just in the media before meeting her, just because, you know, here in LA, they did a Stormy Daniels Day in West Hollywood. And I just really admired her courage and her outspokenness and thought she was a really smart, interesting person. And when I heard Michael Avenatti treating her so terribly on the stand, it really made me upset as, as a woman and made me really angry for her. And I said, you know, if you ever want to make a documentary about what you've been through, you know, Aaron and I just did a film about Britney Spears and the justice system not working equally for her. If you would like to, um, to explore this in a film, I would love to do that with you. And she said, I'm in. She's like, yes. And so, and it was funny because she said, you know, a lot of people have tried to make a documentary about me before. And I said, who tried? And she said, well, and she named up all these guys. And I was thinking, like, no offense to Judd, but like, I don't think like a bunch of male filmmakers could have got this made. Maybe Judd could have, but maybe Judd's the only person. But um, it, it really took, I think, this sort of feminine lens on the story that really helped bring it to life, especially for the streamers. And so, um, you know, we, when we started making this, there was no indictments. And then when the indictments happened, it just got off the ground um, really quickly. And then, of course, the convictions most recently, and um, hopefully some sentencing news soon. Uh, yes. Hopefully this year. Who knows? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, as, a, as somebody watching the film, and I mean, there's an element of familiarity to it because, of course, we've all sort of been watching this story um, in our in our own lives in some way or another. How did you approach uh, wanting to to tell this story? And I'm wondering um, how much of the footage. Uh, did you have from uh, Denver and from, from that period of time? Like, how did, did you have access to all of it? It seems like we're seeing some of it in the film. Yeah, so when we um, first started the post-indictment version of the film, uh, we asked Stormy, you know, who was filming with you in 2018 when the story broke? And she said this Rolling Stone reporter named Denver Nix was filming with me, and then five other 
camera operators, um, some of them being, you know, her current husband to, to myself filming. And so Denver's footage, I think it was Denver and other filmmakers footage was about a hundred hours. Um, but Denver's footage in the final film was less than 20 minutes of the finished film was Den Denver's footage because what happened was when their romantic relationship started, he stopped filming. And so they brought in all these other people to film. Um, so yeah, it's a very complicated aspect of the story that um, of, like came to light after we started making it. Well, it, it, it is such such a saga and it seems like, you know, there's, you know, peaks and valleys and peaks and valleys. Did you tell everything that you wanted to tell or is there like a whole other side of this that we're not seeing in this film? That's a great question. Judd, what do you think? Is there, is there more to it? I mean, I'm sure there's all sorts of other levels and, you know, it was a lot of history and a lot of incident to get into one two hour film. So there was a lot of discussion about how much time to focus on each aspect because you certainly could have done a lot of, uh, a lot of time on different issues. The Avenatti issue itself is, a, is enough for an entire documentary. <laughs> you know, we didn't, you know, you know, talk, you know, that much about her journey through adult film. It's very rare for uh, women in adult film to become producers yeah. and directors yes. and have more control over her destiny. And this tended to uh, slow down her career at that time. So that's a lot of what we debated. How do you get this story? And also, how much of the story do people know do you not have to tell them? Mm -hmm. We had endless debates about how much detail and I think we realized a lot of people didn't really know that much about it or they had forgotten it. And so just to see it all organized helps you really understand what she's been through and what a nightmare it is. You really just get pulled through the meat grinder when you're pulled into a historic moment and a, a weird political moment in our divided country. It, it, it took a lot of courage for her to stand up. And I just thought it was so great that when she was on the stand, you know, they went at her so hard. And then on the second day, she was really funny and took those lawyers apart. So she really got in some shots. And I thought it made a big difference. It was a great end to that part of the story. I mean, I, mean, I think for, for myself, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of other people, I, I sort of am the, the demographic that you just uh, referenced, that you sort of have like this sort of superficial understanding of this person and this thing's happening in the news. And of course, I mean, I don't, I don't know if either of you know this, but Stormy came to the Rio, um, I think in 2019, um, as part of her tour. We had the privilege of, of having her here um, and, and meeting her and talking to her and getting to know her. And, and I mean, it was, it was really the eye of the storm at that point. And here we are five years later. I mean, you both have um, a personal connection to her. And I think with watching this film, there's people like myself who have a superficial understanding of the story, but we also see, you know, her as a person and, and the human side of her and, and what she's been going through. What is it that you both want us as viewers, as people taking in this saga in, you know, pop, I don't want to say pop culture, but in, 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 this, in the sort of sphere of media that we take in, what is it that you wanted us to know about who she was uh, as a person? Well, for me, um, it was seeing her as a multi-dimensional human, as a, you know, I've referred to her as a Renaissance woman. Um, and I feel like she, because of the industry that she came up in as an actor and a performer, and because of the poverty that she had to fight out of as a, as a young kid, uh, she didn't have the same playing field as a lot of people. And she's been written off by a lot of people as not um, worth listening to as far as her perspectives on the world. And I feel like she, there's so much we have to learn from her because she's such a, a, so many ways, such a free person as far as she has, she never really had anything to lose. So it was it's in some ways really easy for her to stand up and do the right thing. So I think that for me was the inspiration of standing up against all odds and um, having the world see you in a different way. And now she's just a part of American history. And I think that that is, is really important that a person like Stormy was the one that got a conviction for this candidate 
um, when all of the other cases have are so slipping through the fingers of justice and this case stuck and, and I think it's a lot because of her. And so that was why I wanted to, to make this film and what I want people to remember about her. Um, and then she's My cat is attacking me. Lock <laughs> <laughs> up your cats. Oh, my God. Ain't nobody oh, touched oh. that. Oh. Oh. I mean, we, it's, it's, it's such a, a joy to have you both here, and, and there are people who are. So let's let's take a couple questions quickly. I saw yes, one of the twins there. We're what, both going to stand. Your, We're both going to stand. I just want to say. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. We got it. Hi. In the context, can you hear us? Can yes. you hear us? We are Jacqueline and Joyce Roberts. We are in a series of unfortunate events, which this. <laughs> production literally imitates a series of unfortunate yes. events. May I just say in the juxtaposition of today, she was supposed to be here, and now we have history with the debate, etc. Well, tonight I don't know how he performs in the bedroom, but I can tell you he sure gave a pretty good blowjob. And most of it was banal and anal. What I want to answer, what I want to ask you, is that we were told that this documentary is the only time that we're seeing it right now. It seems like it's almost blacklisted. Has there been any, uh, pardon me, blowback? Uh, about you and the documentary, have you received any threats for it? Uh, and um, that would be curious as to see if any free speech has been repressed because of the nature of this very brave um, documentary. Thank you. And my question, perhaps you can answer them both well, together. I just I'd like to ask you. Um, she has a podcast right now. I think she would be a wonderful candidate to go into politics. Would you be willing to continue a sequel to this documentary once the sentencing has been finished? And perhaps you could add more so that this will be a definite part of our history. Yeah. Thank you both for making this excellent documentary. Thank you very much, you guys. Appreciate it. Well, you know, Stormy received a ton of a ton of backlash for making this film yeah. and uh, so many, so many horrible attacks online toward her and her daughter in the aftermath of the trailer being released and her speaking out. Uh, it was really awful. And going on her social media and just checking the, the comments on Twitter were really scary and, and really upsetting. Um, and you know, personally, I you know definitely got a, you know trolls and whatever, but I, I have all my social media set to private and I'm really careful about um, you know, just about people I don't know interacting with my social media and that's been sort of the biggest filter I can put in place but I've made other films honestly where I got more backlash than this wow. um, I think that in, in some ways you know Trump's followers are so used to him being criticized and critiqued that um, they they just expect it you know from from a filmmaker like myself so uh, it, it's been interesting um, you know if he gets in the office it might be a little trickier but we'll see what happens <laughs> Um, you know, it's important to tell these stories. Yes. What about you, Judd? I mean, I'm pretty sure I'll get audited, which is tricky for me because I haven't paid taxes in 27 years. <laughs> um, I, I did not have a lot of blowback, but I think I've just spoken out so much over the years that people are just bored of everything I say politically. I just burnt them out with me babbling. So I, although I do have that little setting on Twitter or you know, and everything that's just like, don't show me hostile things. <laughs> and I think it works well because pretty much everyone is so nice now. <laughs> um, but, uh, I do hope uh, that Sarah gets a chance to do, even if it's a mini doc about what happened since, yeah. because it was hard Woo! to figure out the timing of the documentary because so much was happening in the courts yeah. and we had to pick a moment to end the story even though it was continuing. And I think since there is uh, a lot of positives since it happened to Stormy, uh, it would be nice to yeah. to see that portrayed. She's been through a lot. It, it takes an enormous amount of strength and courage to go through this, even though a lot of the time she regretted it, but she made a very big difference uh, in our country by doing it. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope you know, the positive part of the story gets out there also. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah.
Yes. One here and then one. Uh, hi guys. Um, Hello. Uh, first off, uh, is this going to be submitted for the Oscars? I hope so. Uh, secondly, um, I can't remember my second question, but third, is Stormy going to direct a horror movie at Inchang soon? <laughs> Well, it submitted for an Oscar, it was submitted for an Emmy, and we didn't get nominated, but we weren't really surprised by that because political docs, um, you know, often don't. Like, I, I'm not even sure if Inconvenient Truth was made today that it would get even, you know, a rem remotely as uh, much attention, just because um, I think that, especially in the United States, the average film goer is so burnt out on politics that, um, Oftentimes, the political stories don't get nominated uh, these days, which is, you know, understandable. Um, as far as Stormy goes, she is directing her own thriller at the moment Fantastic. that she wrote. And, uh, and, yeah, so we're really excited for her, and we really hope that she gets an opportunity to direct something in the mainstream, because it's really time for her to do that. She's directed more films than most people I know, I think in hundreds, um, and she's a really uh, talented and capable filmmaker. So I'm excited for her to have that opportunity. Yes. I, feel, I feel like Orange Trumpkin is the villain that we can get to see on, on screen at some point. At some point. Uh, I have another question. Amazing film. Um, I, on the note of Stormy directing over 100 films, did Stormy have any notes on the rough cut or was she allowed to see the rough cut or was there any kind of like uh, things that she didn't want to go to? Uh, just curious. So Stormy had put it all on the film. Um, that was, you know, really important to all of us that it remained, uh, you know, separate and objective from her. She uh saw the film the night before the premiere at south by southwest i screened it for her over zoom from austin before she flew to flew to the festival and it was such an, an amazing experience um very frightening for me i think i like left my body during it to be totally honest with you uh but she um loved it and you know cried and swore and laughed and cheered and at the end of it, she said, wow, this is such a great film. And she's been out promoting it um, all over the world since it came out. So um, we're really grateful for that. And, you know, honestly, it's a big testament to her relationship with Judd. She trusts Judd so much. She's known Judd the longest, like 25 years. And that long friendship and collaboration that they had, there's a lot of trust there. And she knew that Judd was an ally, is an ally, and um, would make sure that the story was told truthfully and kindly and compassionately. Because it was really important to us, you know, this is a, a, a woman who has been treated so, so terribly by the world, um, who's been scarred so many times, and we didn't want this film to be another, another thing that really, you know, hurt her or, or, or caused her harm. Mm -hmm. we, we thought there was a way to, you know, to show her it with all of her flaws and still at the end of the film, you're cheering <coughs> her and hoping the best yes. for her. And that, that was what, what I think we were able to do. And it was really hard. Um, but Judd, Judd's a great EP. He was leading us all the way with so much heart and kindness. And yeah, so I don't know if you want to add to that, Judd. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, it's a lot of courage to talk about the personal aspects of it because, you know, she's revealing the intimate <laughs> details of the fights she had with her ex-husband and how he perceived this situation. And so if there was anything I thought that, you know, she may have trouble with it was just how raw the aspects of her, her family divisions were. And I felt it was, it was important to see all of that because there are real world repercussions to putting yourself in the middle of this. And she, she got divorced and she, you know, has a, you know, conflicts with people in her family and it just made it very real. I think that it's easy to paint someone as, you know, some two dimensional person that's part of some massive conspiracy to make up something to hurt Donald Trump when clearly it's the complete opposite in every possible way. And when you see the complexities of her life, it, it makes you understand how true this, this story is. Because it is really, you know, just about a woman who, who made a, a, an unfortunate 
choice and then got pulled into a political nightmare by a very corrupt criminal person yeah. uh, and has had a lot of difficulty uh, escaping it. So hopefully with what happened at tonight's debate, you, you all didn't see tonight's debate. Yes, we but, did. Uh, yes. 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 Oh, you just watched it like a yes. together? Yes. 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 Was it a double feature? Yeah! Like, yeah. Yes. Wow, that is the best Vancouver night. Yeah. It could only be better if like, Seth Rogen came on at the end and gave him all marijuana. Yeah! <laughs> and, and what a night. Well, you know, hopefully this is the beginning of the Wait, end Seth of here? the story. Yeah. Um, let's, let's take a one, one more question. If, uh, someone I'm going to go here because yes, you already had one. Yeah. Thank you, Rio. <laughs> one, one more question. All right. Yes. Actually, I have my own, but that's <laughs> that, that one will work better. Yeah. I don't know. I actually, can you no, hear no, me now? This one's better. <laughs> yes. Uh, I just wondering. Uh, it was four years ago. Stormy was here, and I was here. I gave her the shoes as a present to give away from home. But I don't know why. But right now we have all kind of things happening. Today is the SpaceX launch. The first human. Pilot run spacewalk. So technology is getting up ahead. I just did a coincidence. And also tomorrow is a 9 11, 23 years later. Wow. And also, this this day wasn't be because of earlier you schedule it by here is in uh, June the 10th, yeah. 2024, and then they postponed it as another reason. I was there and then I walk in, I didn't know. If I saw the poster, look on the door, then I know. Only after I get there an hour early. So, Did you have a question? I did have a question. Uh, from the gentleman though, there, we have a lot of controversy in here. And Toronto International Film Festival is going to host uh, another movie called Russian in War about the... The What's your question? What's your uh, question? The question What's your is, question? how can you uh, be more screening this to other city, maybe into Vancouver Film Festival, yeah. maybe at the last minute edition, if you cannot go the other way, yeah. or Kong Films, or to, uh, another, uh, maybe an Ottawa Film Festival. So, so the question is, can this film be filmed yeah. else, sorry, be screened elsewhere in Canada, or do you have plans to have it uh, screened elsewhere in the States? Well, it's on Peacock here in the United States streaming on the platform, but we uh, tried to get it distributed in Canada on broadcast and have not been successful in that yet. So I would love to screen it at more theaters in Canada and for more Canadians to see this. We, I think we can help you with that. We can help yeah. you. We can, yes. We're connected. Yes. Yeah. We're connected. Indies will su will support you um, because you're you're Canadian and Judd, you sort of are as well. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and we're looking we're looking to do, to do stuff like this. So I I, I, I kind of want to wrap it up, but I, I want to put it out um, you know to both of you. This is such a, a complicated story, and it's there's so much going on. And I think you know both of you are um, you know uniquely connected to the subject of this film. And you know you you sort of live a kind of life that we don't. It's a it's a textured life and have probably an understanding that is far beyond us, you know, East Van lunatics here. Um, in, you know, it, it, looking towards the future, when we think of Stormy Daniels, like I, I in some ways when I watched this film, I, I thought a little bit about Monica Lewinsky yeah. and how um, she was, uh, you know, a real, uh, someone who was in a very similar situation with a president. Um, she was really put through it, you know, back in the day, um, and, you know, she sort of had, has managed to come through the other side and is viewed very differently, you know, 20, so I don't even know how many years later, 25 plus years later. The way that we view her has changed. History, uh, I think, has changed. We as, as people as kind of have evolved. Um, what, what do you want for us um, you know, say down the line, five, ten years, how do you want us to perceive Stormy and, and what happened here uh, with her and what do you want for her? Well, um, I'll, you know, I'll say what, what I hoped for her in making this film was that there would be a way for her to eventually 
pay off all the legal fees that she owed Donald Trump so she could get out from underneath that debt that was really dogging her and the threat of losing her home and potentially going to jail for not paying him. And as a result of the GoFundMe that was launched on Rachel Maddow's show on MSNBC a few months ago, she was able to raise over a million dollars from everyday people. Um, and, and, um, and she was able to pay off Trump's illegal fees. And so that was a huge freeing moment for her. So that was one of the, like personally, I wished that for her and then it happened and that was a, a beautiful outcome. Um, and then beyond that, I, I really hope people remember her in history uh, the same way we think of women like Rosa Parks yes. that really um, just are these figures in the, in the future that we'll read about in history books and have just a lot of admiration for. Yeah. I hope that Stormy is never forgotten because she's sacrificed a lot um, for what happened to her. And, you know, we've talked about Monica Lewinsky many times, she and I, and she's in touch with Monica, in fact. Um, in fact, we asked Monica to interview for the film. Um, and Stormy would always say that Monica had it way worse than Stormy did because Stormy, when this happened, Stormy was a semi-public figure. She was a celebrity. She had acted in a bunch of porn pornographic films at that point. She was um, much more savvy in the world than Monica was, who was really, really, was younger and also much more um, vulnerable than Stormy considered herself, even though Stormy was very vulnerable. Um, so Stormy you know, always likes to say that Monica had it way worse than her. And um, so, yeah, so th that's my hope. What about you, Judd? Uh, I hope that, uh, you know, people see her uh, as someone who, who came from a very difficult place, suffered a lot of childhood abuse, and it put her in this position to feel like, you know, enough is enough and I'm going to stand up for myself. And it happened to happen in this monumental way that affected the country ultimately in a very, very positive way. You know, unless we know what our poli politicians are up to, we can never, you know, hold them to account. You know, I always say the only time I've ever seen Donald Trump look truly happy is in that video of him dancing at the party with Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally the only time he looks like it, like he's having a blast. I mean, it, this has really been a nightmare figure for our country that's been so destructive. So. I hope that, you know, for her, that, you know, she gets to have, you know, some of her dreams come true, gets the respect she deserves for, for what she did, and gets, you know, the peace and the calm and the quiet and the stability uh, that, you, you know, she deserves. Mm -hmm. Um, and for making this film, putting your, your time and your effort and your heart into telling this story and bringing it to people. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, I'd also like to say as well, um, you know, we are an indie movie theater here, so it's so cool mm -hmm. to have you both join us in this way. We're yeah. in an indie Thank movie you! Movie. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for watching this film. Very few people in this country have seen apparently. Yeah. Um, and it's, it really is an honor and a privilege. So please, um, you know, if either of you are ever in Vancouver again, I'm sure, Sarah, you will be at some point, please come and, and join us and be a part um, of this process as well, because we, we have so much respect for what you do. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for joining us. And thank you guys as well for coming. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, Sarah's mom is here. Sarah's mom is here. Sarah's mom. She's here. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for coming tonight.